he later became mayor of Palo Alto and, uh, for two years. And my other grandfather was principal of Los Altos High School, you know, not, not far from here, who believed that, you know, everyone had to be an educator. That was the apogee of success. Anything south of that was failure. So the rest of us failed pretty much in his eyes. Um, but in 1971, I was one day, I never saw my dad. He was always you know, at the White House working that year. And the only time I saw him was to go there and visit. So wandering around the White House as a kid, back then it was totally different, not all the security that you find today, um, looking for the coach. And I ran into an assistant to Kissinger's who said, young man, would you like to shake the hand of Henry Kissinger? I didn't know who Kissinger was. And I shook Kissinger's hand, you know, it was in the adjacent office, and the National Security Advisor was the president. And, uh, you know, he carried my bag up to the car, I'm leaving on a trip. Sure, picked up a black bag, walked out the door, you know, dropped his bag off on West Executive Drive. And uh, I said, where, where are you going? And he said, don't tell anyone, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm going to China. <laughs> so, my connection to the relationship I carried the guy's bag to the, the, <laughs> outside the White House. 11 years old, I had no idea who he was or what it meant to be going to China. I processed it later. Um, but my, my friends in China call that period, uh, 1971, 1972, when we first went in. China preparing to enter the world. We had no trade. Uh, we were fighting each other in Vietnam, don't forget. Yeah. And uh, a few years before, China had lost 400,000 men on the Korean Peninsula, including the son of Mao Zedong, who was buried there. And uh, it was in the throes of the Cultural Revolution. We had nothing, no connection. And if you can imagine, you know, today's world, the President of the United States flying to Air Force One into uh, a far off country with which we have no relationship at all, a hostile country and making a relation, you know, building a friendship. You know, not militarism, but diplomacy. And uh, Nixon stepped off the plane and shook the hand of Joe and Lai, and it was a friendship that, a handshake that, uh, that changed the world. And if you track the relationship for 40 years, you have candidates who, during the campaign, you know, I went first to China with Reagan. Reagan said in 1980, I'm gonna pull the ambassador from Beijing and re-recognize <laughs> Uh, that's how deep the discussion got, and China, of course, would have been infuriated. But that was the politics of the time. He was elected president and saw that in order to get things done, he, he had to bring in China to the country. And that's, when, that's the early 80s, when China was not nearly the economic power that they are today. Bill Clinton runs in 1992, and he talks about the butchers of Beijing. You know, it gets on... You know, George H.W. Bush criticizes him for his pro-engagement policy, gets elected president, and sees the world a little differently. Barack Obama, in 2008, criticizes George W. Bush for going to the Olympics in Beijing. And then people get elected, and the world all of a sudden looks a little different. And so what happens? Republicans and Democrats alike, they get into office, and they see that it's a very complicated relationship. A lot of interests, economic and security, and culture, and uh, international collaboration. And if you want to fix uh, the issue with Iran and uh, weaponization, you got to get China's cooperation. You want to get stability on the Korean Peninsula, you have to work with China. If you want to get you know, some sense of stability in the South China Sea, you got to work on solutions with China. You want to work on debt issues in Europe, you want to work on the environmental issues. So, you know, it's, a, it's the world's largest emitter of, uh, of CO2 greenhouse uh, gases. You know, so as governor of Utah, you know, I used to make the claim, which I think is accurate, that, you know, we're all downstream. And a lot of the stuff that China would put in the air would come across the jet stream, across the Pacific Ocean, land on the doorstep, a percentage of the overall on the coast of California. Some even would blow inland. And I'd say, you know, we can only do so much unilaterally you got to work together multilaterally or bilaterally to fix the issue. So that's a long way of saying you have to discount a lot of what's taking place during the campaign. What we really need 
is a full-blown comprehensive discussion about what our long-term interests are, which we've never had that discussion. We've never had a discussion on where our shared interests are and how together we can work on better communities, how together we can work on expediting health care for the poor, uh, how together we can get our scientists together to find a cure for cancer, how together we can work on emissions that affect everybody. There's so much that we can do that we're not even scratching the surface on. So discount a lot of the political talk today and hope that whomever is in office has the foresight to say, my job is to handle America's interests today and for tomorrow. And the tomorrow is going to be the United States and China for as far as the eye can see into the 21st century. That will be the relationship that must be worked on. I hope our candidates have an answer like this to some of these issues. Really appreciate that. Well, now here's what happens. You know, let me, I'll give you a sense of being on the debate stage. You know, when you're running for president, for those of you who haven't run for president, it's a pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you know, somebody on the far end of the stage, you know, who within, you know, two minutes declares war on five countries. You know, <laughs> you know and, and the crowd goes wild, you know, whoops it up. And the next, you know, the next guy says, well, I'm going to, you know, do this or that, you know, tariff wise in China. The crowd goes wild, comes around to me, you know, poor old thing on the side. And, uh, and I said, I can't say that. I, I have to tell the truth. And I just have to say how the thing really works. And what we're going to have to do as a country to prepare for the future and deal with the reality. Kind of let No applause. <laughs> 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 but no so